So hello and welcome to our Thimble mushroom tutorial. Travels has popped along to say hello. Well he's a bit sleepy as you can see so I think he's he's going to be heading off in a second. So I'll just pop him down. There you go. Oops, there you go, good boy. So we've put together a little sheet for you. Always a memory aid really. But it just takes you through the steps and it's got a list of the different materials and things you're going to need. But really this has been put together just to give you an idea of something you could do with bits and pieces you've probably got in, lying around in your craft stash. So you're going to need a little bit of carded wool. Um, I'm going for a red mushroom, um, some green, and I've gone, gone for just like a um, whitey grey colour for the stalk. But again, you just use whatever you've got lying around. Um, we're going to use, this is a one and a half centimetre felt ball, but again, you could just make one yourself if you don't have any. A thimble or you know, an egg cup or an, a mini tea cup or anything you've got in your stash and a bit of felt. And then lastly, you need a bit of pipe cleaner. This is one of the extra strong pipe cleaners that you can get. It's just got a little bit more body to it, but it doesn't matter if you don't have that. The only reason we use... Um, a pipe cleaner is if you haven't done it before is that if we were just to use wire the wool would slip up and down it as we're poking it in and it'll drive you nuts so a pipe cleaner just helps you to felt it a little bit more quickly tools wise um pair of scissors wire cutters or just um all scissors just purely for cutting your pipe cleaner um a tapered bradle or all which is really good for making holes um a felty needle and if you've got one but you can do this whole thing with just a single needle if you don't um you can use a multi-tool again you know, that's just purely for speed and then a little bit of glitter it's always good and some super glue gel the reason i use this one is that it dries instantly when it hits the wool so it helps you to hold a shape so but if you don't have it again you could do something else so i'm just going to move this camera down a little bit so we get a little bit more on the screen there we go so now then to get started what we're going to do using the you're just going to draw around something but if you can cut around the template on here but alternatively, you'll just draw around something that you have. So I'm going to use my thimble. And I would suggest you would be best off probably doing this in pen, sorry, pencil. But um, I'm going to do it in pen just so as you, it should show up a little bit better, hopefully, on here. So we're going to draw around that. And then we're going to cut it out. So it doesn't have to be really neat. Just cut around it. Whoops. Seem to have lost the ability to cut. So cut around it. There we go. And then you're going to pop it onto your mat. Now, this can really be any colour, but um, I've gone for this nice natural colour because it's going to poke through and mix with the red and give it a slightly more natural finish. So I'm just going to get a little bit of red fibre, not too much. I'm just going to spread it out until it comes about half a centimetre or so wider than the um, felt disc that you've got on your table, or on your mat rather. And I'm just going to poke it on the top hold it down flat and I'm going to poke it on to the to the felt disc so just poke it on try to avoid the um light fibers and if they've come out a bit more like mine about centimeters so that's fine because we can always pull a bit off in a minute or two so I'm just going to poke it through the um disc and then I'm going to gently prise it up and you can see we've got the disc with all the extra wool around the edge and I've got quite a lot there so holding on to the rest of it I'm just going to Gently tease some of those excess, whoops, some of those excess fibres away like that. And then pop it back on your mat and just fold the edges up and over and into your uh, felt disc. Having a felt disc just gives it a little bit of body, a little bit of strength without actually having to use too much wool. So if you don't have felt, you could use any sort of light sort of material, light weave material would work quite well. Or you could just make it all from felt. It doesn't really matter. So I've parceled it up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the fibres backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards until they mix with the um, beige wool that's in, beige felt rather, that's in the middle. So I'm going to poke it all over to flatten it down. And again, if you've only got a single needle, that's fine. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. So I'm going to poke it all over to flatten it down. If you feel it's starting to get embedded, into your mat then just you know you need to stop and pull it off so i'm going to flatten it all down all over 
and then I'm going to prise it off. And it's going on furry on the other side or hairy. So I'm going to poke that back through. And you'll be able to start to see um, that you're getting soft, creamy, beigey fibres coming through, which is the fibres of the, the felt catching on the barbs of the needles as well. So you're going to get a really nice sort of mottledy effect. So just keep going. Now, you're going to do this four or five times probably. Let's see, all over. And you'll notice I'm pushing my needle right down in. So it's getting a nice, smooth finish to it. So we are going to be poking it more. So it doesn't have to be absolute, whoops, bit of green. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So it's all over. I'm going to turn it once more. And I'm going to poke it down flat. Okay, on the surface. Now, underneath is still going to be hairy, but that's fine because we can trim that later. Um, so just all over and put your fingers down and you can neaten in around the edges just by poking in. You could also do it with a single needle. Just take any of these little fibres and poke them in. But keep your nails down because a, a felty needle behind your nail, is it's really not a very good thing. So we have a little red disc with some nice sort of mottledy colours. Hopefully the um, camera will pick it up there um, coming through. Now we're going to make some little dots um, that are going to go on the front or on the top of the mushroom like this but um, you can put them on randomly whatever way you like and if they're raised up a little bit when you're finished that's absolutely fine. Um, a lovely friend of mine Kat Hazelton takes the most beautiful pictures of mushrooms and when I was looking at some a while ago I noticed that a lot of the little sort of lumps and bumps I'm sure there's a tech more technical term than that um, for the mark for the little bits of white on the mushrooms quite a lot of them were sitting up and it looked really really nice so we're just going to poke that in and repeat that so you're just taking a little bit if when you put it on you think oh my goodness it looks more like a sort of giant snowball than a dot on a mushroom just pull it off and take a little bit of the wool away and then poke that in so what you can do as well is just like lightly position them so just roll it between your finger and thumb and poke it in and take a little bit more preferably not the green but hey ho so and just again roll it between your finger and thumb poke it on it will get smaller you as I poke I hope you can see that it sort of starts to recess so we're going to get a little bit more they don't have to be even sizes because nothing's really that regular is it so don't get hung up on making perfect little dots because we're going to give them a bit more of a poke again to mix the colours in and soften everything so I'm going to put another little bit there And I think I'm going to go for one over there. And that should about do me, I think. So give it a roll. Poke it on. So they're all quite lumpy bumpy at the minute. But what I'm going to do with my multi-tool, and again, you can do it with your single needle if you don't have a multi-tool. That's not a problem. I'm just doing it for speed, really, because, you know, otherwise this video is going to go on for a rather long time. So now I'm going to turn it over again and you can see the white haze on the other side that's come through from poking the needles through. So I'm just going to poke that back through and it's going to soften everything and give it a sort of lovely texture on the surface. So you might find that you actually like what started off as the underneath best, which is fine. Just whatever you like. So poke it through backwards and forwards until everything feels quite secure. The more you poke it, the more the colours will soften and blend. So if you want to leave them sitting up pride, then that's absolutely fine. Just stop poking probably about now or slightly earlier. So another little go over. So there we go. So it's a rather hairy mushroom at the minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to the wrong side and just pull those little fibres in and very lightly with my fingernails down I'm going to poke them into the mushroom but I'm not going to poke them right through the other side because it's just going to make that side um, 
furry again. So I'm just tapping them actually just into the mushroom or into the into the disc to tidy them up a little bit. And you can turn it back over. And again, with your nails down, you can just poke in around the edges a little bit to refine it. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle or anything. And that's probably enough because we will give it a bit of a trim with scissors um, later on. Okay, so I'm just going to set that to the side for now. And we're going to look at the stalk of the mushroom, which is just pipe cleaner with some um, wool felted around it. So it comes right up to the top of the mushroom and it goes down into the little ball. So it's slightly longer than it needs to be. So this is half a short pipe cleaner. So it's probably about seven and a half centimetres long. So I'm not going to need all of that, but it, it's quite handy to have a bit extra that you can hold and then you can trim it later. So I don't want it terribly thick, otherwise it's going to look like a tree trunk and that's not a good look really. So on a, on a tiny mushroom. So I'm just going to get a little bit of wool, but the problem is if I pull it to start to wrap it, it's just going to come apart. So all you're going to do is fold your wool in half and then it just gives it a little bit more resistance when you pull it so as you can actually wrap the pipe cleaner more easily. So I've got a bit here that I can hold on the end and then I'm just going to hold the wool over the pipe cleaner and I'm going to stretch it round and wrap it and twist it round as tightly as I can. Now try not to get it sort of like a rope where you've got sort of undulations in it because that is quite difficult to get rid of. You want to wrap it quite smoothly. And then I'm just going to put it on the mat and hold it sort of in place between my fingers so as I can felt along this bit here. And this is definitely a single needle job. Um, you'll end up with mincemeat fingers if you try to do it with your multi-tool. So I'm just going to poke all along and you'll sort of hit and bounce off the wire a bit but you'll get to, sort of quite quickly, you'll start to feel where it is. And what I want to do is contract the fibres round the pipe cleaner, not just push them down totally straight, because then you'll end up with some felt, your pipe cleaner protruding, and the felt showing again. So you're just going to angle past the pipe cleaner each time. So your aim is to sort of make those fibres really tight around your pipe cleaner. Now, it's one of those things that is going to feel like, goodness me, it's never going to felt. But it is. You just keep turning it round and felt in all along okay now it's going to start going hairy and that's fine because that's actually going to help you as it starts to hold it's a little bit easier to work with so keep turning it round round and round work all the way along keep turning it round poking the fibers through notice how i'm angling my needle in just skimming it past the wire each time and make sure it goes right out to the other side because then that's helping to really tighten the fibres together. Now, it'll be hairy on either end, like so, because we're not going to felt that. That's fine. But just right up to the end of the pipe cleaner. And then what I'm going to do, you can see it's like really it's really hairy. I'm going to roll it. So it's a bit like if any of you have ever done wet felting, it's the same principle. We're just using friction as well to help the fibres felt together. So give it a good old roll. And you'll see it's gone a lot smoother. But because I've rolled it, if I didn't poke it a bit more, it would just start to undo again. So I'm just going to poke through again, all along. And it will go hairy again. But because it's more and more felted each time, that's absolutely fine because we'll be able to give it a little bit of a trim at the end. You could as well, if you wanted, put a little bit of something like an acrylic glue along it and rub it in to harden it. Uh, it's not necessary, so just roll it and you have a little mushroom stalk. So I can feel here I've got these hairy bits at the end, so I'm just going to trim those away around the end of the pipe cleaner. Okay, so I've got the top of my pipe cleaner and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue it to the top of the mushroom cap or to the mushroom cap and we're going to be pushing it down round with the glue on it to get the mushroom shape so they're all going to be very different some will come in tight some will be have sort of undulations in them um but it's the beauty of it you mean these ones they're just really oops it's got lots of fluff on it they're really different shapes and sizes but they're all quite endearing really so what we're going to do is 
with your super glue gel. You always have to shake this because it tends to separate out a bit, I find. I'm just going to put a blob, you can see that there, sorry, a blob on top and a little blob just about half a centimetre round, okay? Like so. And then I'm going to get my mushroom top, or cap I should say, and I'm just going to pop it in the middle. Don't hold the glue, don't touch the glue, and then you're going to hold it tight. I'm pushing up into the cap and squeezing it down from the top. So pushing the pipe cleaner up and you'll start to see, you can start to get a bit of shape on your little mushroom cap and you can squish it down. You can give it a roll, you can reshape it a little bit as you're going. Now it's all really hairy now, but I've got that little cap shape going on. Oops, sorry, it's too high. I've got a little cap shape going on now. So I'm going to trim it. Let's just move these bits out of the way now that we don't really need them. So I'm going to give this a trim it makes such a difference. It just sharpens the whole thing up because it's really fuzzy at the minute now. So give it a trim. So it takes a, a minute or two. So just trim it all around. Okay. So you could take more time over it. You don't need to watch me trimming it for ages and ages. But you get the idea you're getting these nice little shapes in it. Okay. So, now we need a base for our mushroom. And then this one, you can see I've, you can see the little ball stick, sticking up on top of the thimble. So what we're going to do, just put your mushroom aside for a moment. And this is um, a 1.5 centimeter felt ball. You can actually get them in greens, but I haven't got any at the minute. And as all the shops are shut, um, I'm gonna improvise and I'm going to color my own. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of green wool now we don't have to cover the whole ball because it's going to go inside the thimble, but we are going to see the top of it. So you can see here on the little diagram that I've drawn, we're just going to cover the top half, just add a little bit of wool over the top of the ball and poke it in. So I'm going to sort of cross hatch the fibres so as they cover over a bit more. I'm going to hold them on top of the ball. Um, with it on my mat, I'm going to poke them into the ball. Keep it on your mat so that it doesn't slip around. Okay, and I'm holding the fibres quite tightly down to the ball. Okay, you, you can't hold it all at once, so you can just work your way around it and just watch your fingers because obviously they're really close because the ball's so small. So you could just kind of felt all over it until they're in quite nice and firmly. Now, the loose bits at the bottom we're going to change that in a minute. So what you can do, so it's all hairy at the bottom, you can just pull it, pull it down and give it a little twist. Okay. And then I'm going to just poke the base of that in. So it's actually pulling the fibres down underneath. And I'm just going to chop it away. Because I just want to see this top bit of green. So it doesn't matter if under here you know, is, is sort of all messy. So... Now I need to make a hole in it to put my mushroom in and my mushroom's quite tall so I can get a sort of feel now for how much I want to have showing and I'm going to have mine about that height I think. So I don't need to put that much pipe cleaner into the ball. So with my wire cutters I'm just going to trim it. Oops, round, round the right way. So I'm just going to trim it. And then at the base here I'm going to just, I'm not cutting the wire with my nice scissors, don't worry. I'm just going to trim the excess wool away so it's going to be easier to get in the hole. So put your um, little green ball back on the mat and just in the top of it, we're going to make a hole down into it and I'm going to push it. Now that it's in, you can push it. Because the ball is quite tightly felted, it's quite firm, the hole will close over really quickly. So I've got a little bit of super glue again in my um, tray. I'm just gonna check that I can get it in. I'm gonna put a bit of glue on the end of my pipe cleaner. I'm gonna poke it in and I'm gonna hold it. Oh, I've got glue on my fingers. So, not super glue I should hasten to add. So, now then, you have a little mushroom on a ball. You could even leave it like that, but for the thimble element, 
what we're going to do is we're going to get your little thimble and it's going to push in to your thimble like so. Okay, now it's a bit rough and ready at the minute, but we will neaten that in a moment. So just take a minute to check it. And I think actually I'm going to tighten up my stem a little bit. Okay, like so. And I'm going to tighten up a little bit of the green. So, which one will I have? I'll go for this one. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue round, about halfway down. Oh, my fingers just slipped there. That's come out. So we'll leave that one to the side. I'll use that later. I'm going to do that again. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue round about halfway down. You don't want it to come out the top like I just did with that one where my finger slipped. But once it's dry, it's fine. But it's going to stay wet for a little while. So I'm just going to push the mushroom now down in. You can imagine if I was trying to do this with um, glue round the top of it, I would become, I would get stuck to everything. It would all get a bit messy. So... Now I'm just going to poke the needle round to neaten the green on the edges. Okay, of my little mushroom. Hook that in. And you can see the join here. It's, it's a little bit unsightly. So I'm just going to get another little bit of green wool. And I can just poke it in. So I'm holding it on my mat so it's not slipping around too much. So just poke it in and it's quite nice. You can even leave it a little bit hairy, a little bit tufty. So it looks a bit more like grass growing up around it. It's up to you. Quite a lot of the things I make, I have to admit, I have, I'm have. i a bit of a smooth freak. But um, for this, it's rather nice to have little wispy bits showing. So sorry, I'll just turn that around this way. So poke it in. And I think that's probably enough. So rather than spending ages poking in all the bits I don't want, I'm going to give it a little trim with scissors. Like so. I'm quite liking some of these little bits coming up the sides. I mean, you could play around with this and adapt them in all sorts of ways. If your stalk then is a little bit hairy, just give it a trim. Just check it. Give everything a little trim. You have a little mushroom. Now, I do like a little bit of ultrafine glitter. I think it looks frosty on these. So I'm just going to sprinkle it on. You can just tap off the excess. Put it back in the pot afterwards. You have a thimble mushroom. So, where's our others? So you can make a whole lot of them. Put them together, make a little seam. You, they make really nice lapel pins. You could put a brooch pin on them and wear it. Um, I also incorporate them sometimes into my little seams. This one um, looks quite nice, nestled in amongst the mushrooms and um, reels and things on my little bird seam. So you know, it's up to you what you want to do with it, but it's a bit of fun at the end of the day, hopefully. So I hope you've enjoyed our first little tutorial. We will be back with more. Um, but thank you very much for tuning in and I hope you make a nice mushroom if 